بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ألهمنا مراشد أمورنا وأعذنا من شرور أنفسنا أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس قال أسجد لمن خلقت طينا قال أرأيتك هذا الذي كرمت علي لئن أخرتني إلى يوم القيامة لأحتنكن ذريته إلا قليلا قال اذهب فمن تبعك منهم فإن, فإن جهنم جزاؤكم جزاء موفورا واستفزز من استطعت منهم بصوتك وأجلب عليهم بخيلك ورجلك وشاركهم في الأموال والأولاد وعدهم وما يعدهم الشيطان إلا غرورا إن عبادي ليس لك عليهم سلطان وكفى بربك وكيلا ربكم الذي يزجي لكم الفلك في البحر لتبتغوا من فضله إنه كان بكم رحيما صدق الله العظيم نسيذي ركو إن ففتين دي جزء في القرآن الكريم نون السورة بني إسرائيل It is after the surah that the next surah is known as Surah Al-Kahf, which was called the answer to the era of the burst of shaitani power. Surah Kahf is called a cave. And whenever there's a storm outside and someone was in a jungle, then to save himself he had to go into a cave. We entered into the era where we are living in a jungle. People around have become animals already. And they are making the non-animal into animals. Protection from the storm is that you go into a cave. Before mention of the cave comes in this surah, Surah Bani Israel, which started with regarding Subhan al-Ladhi asra bi abdihi. The beginning of the surah was It's a very long discussion, but it was that Allah Tawarukala had made indication a time will come where there will be a very strong Jewish presence in the land of Al-Aqsa. It was mentioned that we will bring you all back. And we will bring you all back. You will behave in the manner you behaved once upon a time. Once upon a time in the land of Al-Aqsa, the worst of actions took place. In the Mubarak land, but the filthiest of actions, once upon a time. When Musa a.s. was given the Torah, the people were told that there will be two times in your history, that in the blessed lands of Al-Aqsa, you will commit the worst of oppression. There was one time in the past that they did it, and the world waited for the next. There's different explanations of when the next came. But one very striking explanation is that the day Israel was formed, actually on that day when the news came that they won the war, someone later on recorded that his teacher went into Sajda. His teacher went into Sajda in those lands. So someone said to him, there's no need to make Sajda. When he came up from Sajda, he said, and Allah has spoken the truth. That Allah had told us there will be a day that these zalims, oppressors will come back in our lands. The day Al-Aqsa was formed as a Jewish land. Already at that time, it was an announcement to the world, be ready for the beginning of a new world. We perhaps never saw that day So we won't understand how the world changed with that. 
It was a shock to the entire Arab world. That how can the land of Al-Aqsa surrounded by so many Muslim lands, all of them failed, all. And one small Israel beat all of them. Six days of war. So many Arab Muslims. The entire world landed in Afghanistan. Entire world, it was called the coalition. Entire world landed in Afghanistan. The entire world were kicked out of Afghanistan. But in Al-Aqsa, it was the entire Muslim land surrounded Al-Aqsa. And Israel defeated all of them. At that time, Mawana Abu Hassan Ali Nadwi rahimullah, was one of those unique speakers who addressed the Arab world. Perhaps it was in Damascus, when a lot of lectures were taking place. How could it happen that Al-Aqsa has been taken away from the lands of the Muslims? So in his lecture, he mentioned the most striking part of the lecture was this. That he said, you people are amazed how Al-Aqsa has been handed over to the Jews. He said, the reason perhaps is because from the time we were brought into this world, we saw the plane of Islam flying. And it flew so high in the sky that we never ever dreamed it possible for the plane to come down. He said, so people started thinking that Islam has been made to be high. And the Muslims will always be dominant on all. He said, but we all know the aeroplane that goes up, it goes up with fuel. As long as there's fuel in the aeroplane, it will be a lovely journey. But if the captain doesn't keep his eye on the gauge, and he doesn't ever think of refueling, he says, a time has to come when the aeroplane crashes. Then he said that you people are amazed Al-Aqsa has been given over to the Jew. He said, for years I sat amazed that it is still in the hands of the Muslims. I could not understand how it's lying on top flowing, but there's no fuel in the aeroplane. And then he said, it is the kindness of Allah that this aeroplane of Islam, however, it does come down, but it never crashes. He says, it never crashes. It just came down, that's all. And he said, all that I and you need to do now is put in that fuel again that sent it up. And then he explained what was that fuel. From the points that he mentioned is, he said, when Allah's Nabi came, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he painted such a picture of paradise in the hearts of Sahaba, radiallahu anhum. He brought it so close, so close, so close to every one of them. That when the fruit of Jannah was within the hands grab of that Sahabi, that's where he left him. Now the Sahabi put out his hand and he said, I want this fruit. And then it was said to him, there's only one thing preventing you from the fruit. He said, what's that? He said, you have to die. He said, that bridge which the whole world was scared to jump. He created a nation who were thrilled to jump it. Because they were looking on the other side of the bridge. He said, the day we will create that picture of Jannah again in our children. Where Jannah is more closer to them than everything of the world. Then your children and my children will become the ones who will put up the plane of Islam again. But as long as that picture is not there. And we always thought that our plane will fly, even if there's no fuel. So the world saw what happened when the picture was painted. It was called Afghanistan. It was called Taliban. It was called the Islamic Emirate. The whole world landed up there. This group fought the best military of the world. And some of them were still wearing chumpels. Wearing chumpels, they kicked out the mightiest military of the world. My one friend said that one leader of the army, till the ending, he remained wearing his chumpels. He never took out his chumpels. In the mountains going with his chumpels, coming down the mountain with his chumpels. Forget a helmet, forget a bulletproof, his normal shawl, but he kept his chumpels till the ending. 
That when you saw that man with the chumpels, we understood what is called the power of Iman. They kicked out the mightiest military with what? It was called with the spirit to be happy to die for Allah. So at the ending, they even announced, and it was a unique announcement, that they said Allah had blessed us with 80,000 talibay shahada, mustashid, desiring death, 80,000 youngsters. 80,000 youngsters did not sign up for the military. They signed up to die. 80,000. And he said, in the battle against America, we lost 6,000. 6,000. And then the leader said, I saw 76,000 of my children. Meaning, saw means I know of them. He said, when the victory was declared... The next morning at the time of the Hajjud, they put their heads in sajda. He said they did not put it in shukr to Allah that the war has ended. He said they put their heads on the ground crying to Allah that is it because of some sin of ours that you accepted our brothers but you never accepted us. 76,000 in one land when this picture of Jannah will be created, you will get millions of this ummah who will be ready to stand. And they say, I also want to jump the bridge. But it will only happen if the picture of Jannah is recreated. And if we just think because my name is Ahmed and Muhammad, so it means my son's aeroplane will always fly high. That aeroplane doesn't fly high on. In those verses which I read, Allah Tabarakullah explains that there is something, forget the fuel in the aeroplane, which if it's running short, the aeroplane is going to come down. Besides that fuel, there is a certain devilish force which has seen the plane of Islam, which means me and you, my child and your child. He can be Hafiz of Quran, he can be Alim of Islam. She can be Hafiza, she can be Alima. She can be Apa, he can be Molana. For the devil, it makes no change what the name of the aeroplane is. That devil's eye has fallen on that aeroplane. And with all the effort, they are pulling that aeroplane to the ground. How Al-Aqsa fell... It gave a warning to the world that you and your child, me and my child are not the haram. If Al-Aqsa could fall, then me and you and our children can also fall. If there is no fuel to push against the current of the devil's pull, then a parent cannot later on cry and say, what happened to my child? The answer will be, it's natural. That if there's a pull to the ground and there's no push upwards, then your child, forget your child, you, me, we're not going to survive. Allah Tabarakallah says, Wa is kulna. The word is means remember. The word is means think again. The word is means don't ever forget. Wa is kulna lil malaikati sjudu li adam. Allah Tabarukala is asking us not to forget the beginning of this. The beginning of mine and your coming in this world. We all speak of Nabi Adam alayhi salam. You say, that's my father. So normally you tell someone that don't ever forget who's your father's enemy. Don't ever forget who's your father's enemy because he's also your enemy. So if my father and my grandfather... Or my great-grandfather, if they had a fight with somebody else, it remains in the family. That that one don't ever associate. You know what he did to your grandfather? But this is one issue that I also forgot and you also forgot. That do you know what the devil did when Adam a.s. was made? Do you know how he hated Adam a.s. and he hates me and you? وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمِ 
Allah Tabarakullah says, Remember when Allah said to the angels, Everyone must prostrate to Adam. Fasajadu, everyone did it. Illa Iblis. The devil was not going to ever do it. He had already criticized Adam Alisa. He hated Adam Alisa. He hated him so much that he know, knew if I don't make the sajda, I'll get kicked out of paradise. Perhaps you will see it in a house where a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law. When they hate each other, the daughter-in-law finally says, I'm leaving. The husband says that if you're going to leave, walk out of this house, all this money. He says, I'm going to hell with the money. The devil, when he said, I won't make sajda to Adam a.s., he said, to hell. Meaning, I'll go to hell, but I'll never make sajda to him. That's how much he hates us. قَالَ أَأَسْجُدُ لِمَنْ خَلَقْتَ طِينَ he said, must I make sajda to someone who you have created from dust? Teen means sand. We are created from sand, but when he said the word sand, it's not like how Allah created me so unique from sand. For him it was, I must make sajda to rubbish. أَرَأَيْتَكَ هَذَا الَّذِي كَرَّمْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَرَأَيْتَكَ means like, this word Ara'aitaka, you have to understand the Arabic language. Like how we will say that. Just remember. Ara'aitaka. Just remember. Meaning I'll prove my point. هذا الذي كرمت علي This is Arabic. You'll only understand it if you got a taste of the language. Like how we speak in school. You say this rubbish. He said this. الَّذِي كَرَّمْتَ عَلَيْهُ Who you gave him honor over me. Like this. This is like a normally in a mother-in-law and daughter-in-law fight. They talk like this. See this filth. You're taking her side. This one. This one. That's how he spoke. That's how he looked at me. How he looked at you. When I'm saying how he, how he, I want you to understand this. That sometimes that funny haircut of mine is only on my head because he asked for it. Sometimes that funny haircut of mine is only on my head because he asked for it. It's only I never saw him asking, he asked through his friends. So when the friend said, will you cut your hair like how he wants, I cut it. But when he spoke about me, his words was, this rubbish. The one that you honored over me. لَيْنَ خَرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ You give me time till the last day. لَأَحْتَنِكَنَّ ذُرِّيَّتَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Then I will pull his progeny where I am going. If I have to burn, they will burn with me. قَالَ اذْهَبْ Allah Tabarakullah said to him, go. فَمَنْ تَبِعَكَ مِنْهُمْ Whoever will choose to follow you. فَإِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ جَزَاءُكُمْ جَزَاءً مَوْفُورًا Then they must remember that they will find Jahannam waiting for you and waiting for them. Before I will continue, most of you must have heard that in the last one week there was a concert. Nearly everyone heard of the concert in the lands of Hijaz. And many people got shocked that how can you have a concert in that land? The answer was if that aeroplane had no fuel. From the time of the Khilafat falling, a very great effort was made in the lands of Hijaz and Muqaddas. That they could not bring that what they brought, but they introduced what is called schools. In their schools, they had nothing but what we ourselves today say education. In their schools, they had nothing but what we call harmless education. And another example is when Taliban took over Afghanistan. The world was overjoyed. But we has, must have seen that there was a group in Afghanistan who were running for the aeroplane. No one runs to catch an aeroplane. You normally say, I'm rushing to catch my aeroplane. They really rushed. They really thought you can catch an aeroplane. They grabbed onto that wheel, some of them. They died. In trying to run to the land of evil, they died. Where we were asking, can we come and live in that land? We saw some people going out of that land. 
They were jumping over walls. They threw their child over the wall. Which mother will ever put her child over? Now up till now they are looking for their child. They put the child over the wall. They went on the other side. They can't find the child. You wonder what made you do what you did. Like, What were you running from? So a lot of people ask this question. Why were they so scared of what made the rest of the world so happy? Why were they so scared? The answer was that that few cities of Afghanistan, not the whole Afghanistan, the rest of Afghanistan, America never even went there. They had certain lines, you don't cross these lines. They used to only go to those lines. There they were getting bombed. They never went further. Because someone asked where all these Taliban suddenly came from. The answer is they came from the other side of the line. On the other side of the line, there were madrasas, there were Darul Ulooms, there was jihad training, everything was happening on the other side. But in these about seven or eight cities, what did they bring? They brought that same harmless education that we got. Result of that harmless education, harmless means Shakespeare, and the English of Shakespeare. Harmless means the signs that my son and your son, my daughter and your daughter, Harmless means the philosophy that my child and your child, what we call this is harmless education. They never brought anything else. Harmless education. They introduced to the lands of Hijaz and Muqaddas. Once they brought harmless education, they created an entire generation of people in the land of Arabia who every weekend wanted to do whatever they wanted. And then they said, the only thing is you can't do it here. We always knew in the past, we were flying into Makkah Mukarramah, they were flying out of Makkah Mukarramah. Sometimes a person would be on the same aeroplane. My one friend, he works at Heathrow Airport. He said it was the first time when he was working, that they told him, because you're Muslim, the royal family, meaning that country's royal family, the princess, normally you hear the princess, you always think pretty. Princess means it has to be a pretty princess. They are not always the prettiest. So for him it was like the apas will come and you just look down and see the princess and you go with that extra haya. And he said when he walked into that room, he never even realized that he just opened his mouth like, He saw Europe in the name of Aisha and Fatima. That was the first time he said he saw the royal family. And he saw them. He said they were more naked than the European woman. At that time. That was years ago. The world who had the chance would see a woman would enter the aeroplane with Abaya. And in the bathroom of the aeroplane she would take it out and come and sit without anything. For her it was this zulam that is being made on me. The only thing she couldn't show that thing in the land. They had to create such a generation, such an amount, that finally when the leader would come and say, you want a concert? Then there's an entire country that said, we want the concert. And where the people from around the world were begging open the haram, there was that amount of people in that land who were saying, open the concert. That concert gave a message to the world that harmless education created this. Harmless education made people run behind the aeroplane. That I heard Islamic law is coming, I don't want it. Barbaric, filthy, my rights as a woman. Harmless education brought the aeroplane of Islam to the ground. Which means it's not harmless. Which means it's not harmless. Normally when we speak to a parent, he will say this phone, and the phone is terrible. He will say this internet, and the internet is terrible. You will never hear him saying, and this university. You will never hear him saying, and this university. Because it's very easy for a father to say, my son, don't use that phone. 
And to say, my son, don't spend so much time on the computer. But you'll never hear the father saying, my son, are you sure you want to go university? Rather, you'll hear him saying, you rubbish. If you don't wake up now and go back there, I'll kill you. Because if you don't get your certificate, who's going to take over my job? That is why if a person makes dua, he will make dua for a lot of things. But he'll never ever make dua, Allah, my son is going to the next grade in school. I also know that is the pit of the devil. I'm forced to send him. Allah, please save him. Why are we not making that dua? When an entire land of Arabs went dancing on the stage. Entire land of Arabs. When we saw people running to get out of Afghanistan, all of them said the only thing I saw was harmless education. 20 years of harmless education could create what we saw. Our children from day one, they're not in Makkah Mukarrama. They're not in Afghanistan. They are in a land where there's no Islam. If you are not going to put a fuel, if I am not going to put a fuel of what is called the thrill of Jannah, if I say, Moana, you know, at the moment school is tight, so just teach him one, two basic things. It means, you know what, the aeroplane got go very far to go, don't worry about putting in fuel. Or you will say, petrol price is very high. So can't it just fly on automatic? Nothing flies. When Allah Taala said to the devil, go, Allah Taala gave him then power. And this is what we must understand. What was that power that was given to him? وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ وَأَجْلِبْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْلِكَ وَرَجِلِكَ وَشَارِكْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ وَعِدْهُمْ Translation of this istifzaz means insight. Entertain, draw towards you, attract, scare. Istifzaz has all these meanings, but we'll take this. The meaning of insight. Insight means play on their emotions. Play on their emotions using your voice. Wastafziz. Manistata'ata minhum bisawtik. The Bible got this very verse. The Bible only because it went through translations, it ended off like this. That use your music. Use your music. Where Allah Tawarukala did not use the word music here, He used voice. Amongst voice is music. So when I was mentioning, we went off to that concert, the one I wanted to mention is this one that happened in America. There will be many who know about it. And then today I heard that amongst the people who died in this concert, it was a very big concert, Astro World, and the man singing in that concert is a devil, that you can't miss he's a devil. The pictures, the signs, everything he shows that he's the agent of the devil himself. But because of whatever happened in that concert, people died. And then he made an announcement, hey, I'm so sorry, I'm so hurt. So when I read his, like I really thought it was a stampede, he was hurt, but then the truth came out. That people were screaming to him, stop the show. And the dead body was being carried in front of him. While it was being carried, he looked at the dead body smiling and he continued singing. Continued. According to their number now, they say about eight died. But eight were the bodies that were moved in front of people's eyes. And he said, and about 300 are in the hospital. What happened to those 300? They don't want to talk. People said that we felt someone pressing us with a pin, a prick. And then we were falling unconscious. Those that fell unconscious, some of them lived to tell the story, I felt the prick, others. But amongst them there was one Muslim boy also. One Muslim boy also died in that. So much of Satanism was shown in that concert that I read where a non-Muslim said, it was nothing but the devil singing. And I said, if the non-Muslim could pick up the devil, how is it that me and you and our children can't pick it up? Sir? Every sign he had of the devil, 
every sign. He showed a circle like a portal of fire. And he wants you to enter into that fire. And happily everyone is going front. Take me with you into that world. Meaning I want to walk into Jahannam. فَمَنْ تَبِعَكَ مِنْهُمْ Whoever wishes to follow you, فَإِنَّ جَهَنَّمْ Let him understand he is going into the fire. So open they showed it. Here's the fire. But for them is walk through the fire and you will enter my paradise. How those people went. The swastavs is one is music. In the past perhaps you heard about rap. Michael Jackson, pop. The Beatles, rave clubs. And maybe ulama is loudly scream in the path, you walking to the devil. Where you ever thought the non-Muslim will say the devil was singing? Where would the non-Muslim say, I saw devilish things? He said, I just started feeling like I can't breathe. The man said, I felt an eerie feeling, a non-Muslim. Whereas we were supposed to be the one telling the world. So that is one voice. But beautiful Quran is. Quran did not say, Oh shaitan, pull the people with your music. Music was only one. Be so thick, use your voice. Use your voice. And at the end of the verse, وَعِدُهُمْ Continue promising. The voice of the devil is not only music. And that's where many of what we call the very good families. We have made one mistake that we saw one bullet of the devil music. And I told my son, don't you ever listen to pop music, rave music, rock and roll. But what about the other voice? The other voice is what comes through the news. Whether you call it Fox News or BBC News or CNN News. And we saw an example of it. That when the world or one part of the world decides on one way forward and the entire news all structures it in that direction, then you find that everyone suddenly speaks as though he studied the thing in depth. So one person came to the madrasa and he started speaking about one point. So one who started said to him that it sounds you like a professor. like. So he just looked, he said, no, no, I read it on the internet. He said, the way you said it, like you're so convinced, like it's like you did the investigation. So then one person said to him, but how come you missed the other writing on the internet? That you always get two. So the answer was that you never read it on the internet, you heard it on the news. And after you heard it on the news, everything you will read after that will be in that direction. When the news comes, it is also the voice of the devil. How you will understand this is there are certain times where the news comes out with a story. We understood it when we were in madrasa. 911 was a big day at that time in the world. COVID recently is a big day for this time of the world. Some people still don't want to relate with COVID. But I ask you, if you got your vaccination card, then look at the bottom of the card or the top wherever it is. And you will see one small circle there. I'm sure it's still there unless they took it out after the last bayan. But I'm sure it's there. You will see a small circle written Vision 2030. I want you to look at that and think how does COVID have a relationship with Vision 2030? And then if you say no, because once you vaccinated, it means we can live till 2030. Then I'll tell you, look at the first poster of South Africa that came out when COVID hit the world. First poster, precautions to be observed, six points. At the bottom they had vision 2030. On that first poster I said to one friend of mine, look at this. On one side they're saying in the next one year we're all going to be dead. 
And on the other side, we say we're going to reach 2030. Go back. Perhaps in Durban I had mentioned it, but I did mention it when I returned from one Umrah, which was many years ago. And you would have also seen it. On every Zamzam canister, it was written, Vision 2030. Every vi- You could have written Bismillah, you could have written Subhanallah, you could have written anything, it was written Vision 2030. At that time, there was one man, his face, Vision 2030. You would see him in Jeddah, you would see him in Medina, you would see him everywhere on the boards, on one name, Vision 2030. He had Vision 2030 written in front of his name even he before he became the most influential. When we saw him, I already said, how is this man going to take over everyone? And so fast that land changed that everyone went. It comes in one narration, يَكُونُ اِخْتِلَافٌ عِنْدَ مَوْتِ خَلِيفَةٍ there will be major confusion at the time of the demise or the death of a leader. They write the scholars, Khalifatin Hukmiyatin or Hukumiyatin, meaning a force, a created leader. Because not a real Khalif. So one person many years ago asked me, that this narration, how do you think it will work? Because the royal family of that country already had said, if this one dies, he's the next in charge. If he dies, he's the next in charge. He dies, he's the next in charge. So there'll never be confusion. Because before the man dies, it's already known who's the next in charge. Never confusion. So the only answer I could give to him is time itself will give an answer. And I don't know if that time is close. But I do know one thing. After so and so came into power, he removed the entire group of people. That after him, there's no one in charge. And he's not even worried because he doesn't think he'll die. If he ever thought he'll die, he'll never do what he's doing. Because everyone is scared of meeting Allah. This is a man who's not scared. If he dies, the land of Hijaz will see major confusion. He removed the entire cabinet. The entire cabinet he took out. So when I met my friend after that, I said, who knows, but perhaps this is the answer you look for that time. Now if a leader dies in that land, there will be complete confusion. And thereafter things will start. So we went on to that, that vision 2030. Something else I was going to mention on that. That voice, before that it was 911. When 9 took place, it was the news that made me and you, whoever was alive at that time and young, we all thought in one direction. What, what made us think the news? We saw one aeroplane flying into a building. And because the news, I trusted the news so much, I, perhaps you were different, whoever saw it. But at that time, I trusted the news so much that my one friend told me it's a lie. This. I said, it's not a lie. The question came, how did those people take over America aeroplane? So the news went out. That in the past, I don't know if you remember, when we used to get food in the aeroplane, they used to have that small knives. Like a plastic knife. I don't know if you ever thought about it, you don't get it anymore. You only get a spoon, I think. Or maybe they got a very breakable one. So they said using that food knives, Muslims took their knives and put it here by the people food knife. Can't cut bread, that thing. But the whole world was like, they used the food knife. I don't know if you remember, there was a time you could go with a gun onto an aeroplane. With a gun, you could go on an aeroplane. 911 stopped it, you couldn't go with water on an aeroplane after that. They said, with water in the toilet, that man is making a bomb. With water. Someone would have told him, my friend, I got enough water in me. I'll take out that same water, otherwise you're going to stop me going to the toilet in the aeroplane. My water, I'll make the same bomb. Water, they stopped because that knife, everyone shook their head. News. They said how that aeroplane came and hit it at what a strategic point. How he knew if you hit it on this point, 
that entire building will fall to the ground straight. And it fell straight. Never fall this way, never fall that way, straight it fell. Straight. Even that we believed, and that wasn't the worst. The worst was when the FBI, the most unique force in the world, Sherlock Holmes was still Britain. They were bigger than Sherlock Holmes. Best investigators in the world said we have the names of all those people on the aeroplane. They took out their names. They were the ones in that aeroplane. Saudi Arabia sent a message to them. Hey, you know what? Those people are here alive still. Immediately they removed those names. They said, no, no, we made a mistake. And then they made that statement which like shocked the world, but everyone shook their heads. They said, we found the passports of those people. They said that sentence, we found the passports on the people on top of the rubble while digging. And everyone shook their heads. The black box which can never burn, burnt. But China made passport states. It flew exactly straight as though he threw it from the window. Flew, 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 flew. It landed. America said. I found, you say, someone's passport in the building it could have been also. So many died in the building. He said, no, that guy's passport. No wind blew it to the right. No wind blew it to the left. It landed exactly where they wanted it. That man never even thought, can I say this? But the news never ever thought, not one reporter, can I report this? You would have thought one of them would say, boss, this doesn't make sense. Not one could say it doesn't make sense. The reason was, whoever at that time questioned 911 was given a warning in the office. That if you want your job, then don't use your brains. You write our story. Everyone will write the same story so that the whole world thinks there's only one story. If ever you are going to make a decision based on the news, then I'll tell you this, the day the Mehdi stands, the news is not going to be with him. The day the Mehdi stands, the news is not going to be with the Mehdi. On that day before that day, me and you, my wife and your wife, we have to already withdraw from the voice of the devil. Because if I hear ISIS has come up in Arabia, and that's my first impression, and then an alim is telling me, I think that that is the Mehdi, immediately the man will say, Mona, I don't even believe in the Mehdi anymore. I don't believe. All along, again you will say, it can't happen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa reached Medina Munawwara. Years before him, the Jews settled in Medina Munawwara. Every day they would teach their children. They would speak to the Arabs. They would tell the Arabs, the day the final Nabi will come. Allah Tabarukullah says, they recognized him like you recognize your own child. They spoke about the final Nabi. They settled in the land of the final Nabi. They told the Arabs, we will join the final Nabi. They knew he's going to be Arab. They knew it. They had every sign of his. They knew his character. They knew the seal of Nubuwa, how it looks. They knew where his land of Makkah is, where he will make hijrah to Medina. The Arabs knew nothing. They knew it all. The example, perhaps Allah save us, must not be mine and yours. That I grow up telling my son, the Mahdi, the Mahdi, the Mahdi will be like this, the Mahdi will be like that. When the Mahdi comes, we'll join him. When the Mahdi comes, we'll stand up for the battle. And when Allah's Nabi وسلم, entered Medina Munawwara, the ones who never spoke of the Mahdi, of him, joined him. The ones who whole life spoke about him, opposed him. Opposed him. What made them oppose him? So they thought that, no, I'm waiting for the Mahdi. I'm waiting. There was a group of influential Jews, Rasulullah said, 11 Jews of Medina Munawwara 
if they speak the truth, there will not be a single Jew in Medina except that he will believe in me. From that eleven, only two spoke the truth. Nine Jews, which were the news of the city of Medina, when they spoke a lie, but nine, when you have nine speaking the same lie, every Jew believed the lie. If you trust the news today, you will have nine stations, which will all say the same story. And after that same story by nine stations, everyone will say this is the truth. Even the Mehdi will not be followed. Wastavzis pull towards you using your voice. Thereafter Allah Tabarakallah explained his other powers. And the other powers are terrible. I'll go very fast through those powers, but I am most worried of this power. It was this power that made our children in the lands of Hijaz and Muqaddas go on the stage and start dancing like monkeys. It was the voice of the devil which was pushed through school. They also would not understand why were they taught in their lands European education. The land of Arabia is supposed to teach them Quran. You're supposed to learn Sirat. They say, no, Sirat is banned. They said, Quran is banned. European harmless education. European harmless education never needed the devil to come directly and say, oh child, you worship me. He just put education and the child said, I wish I can worship you. We and you have to pay so much for the visa. That child doesn't have to pay for a visa. For him to go to the haram, for her to go to the haram is free. One harmless education came to the child. Harmless. And it poisoned the mind of that child so much. That when the world is crying, I want to go to the haram. That child is crying, I want to dance in front of my new lord. They put a picture of that man and they went wild. Allah Tawarukta mentioned his other powers. But his other powers has never done what the voice has done. وَأَجْلِبْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْلِكْ وَرَجِلِكْ Bring upon the people of Iman your horses, your foot soldiers. Horses means your transport systems. Your horses, whether it's tanks, whether it's planes, whether it's ships, whether it's jets, they will give it to you. The devil's army always enjoyed the best. They had the elephants when other people had camels. They had the fastest horses where other people had donkeys. When the world of guns came, they had the best of guns, everybody else had the rest. They always enjoyed the best. Why Allah said, I'll give you that also. From the beginning he told the devil, I'll give it to you. وَشَارِكْهُمْ فِي amwal. Become a partner with the people in wealth. It's hard to explain this verse, but what it meant is the treasures of the world were put in the hands of the devil and the people of the devil. No matter how much you will try to be richer than a Jew, you will never manage. Because your money you have to make it. His money is given. Your money you have to make it, his money is given. There was a time when in another country I spoke about Freemasonry. And it shocked me that after I spoke about it, I gave an example. I said you will be not doing well in business. And then someone will come to you and say, why don't you join our clique, our league. You ask him, what's that league called? And he say, we got a name. Sometimes they would say, we're just Freemasons. So at that time in Mauritius, they had that word Freemasons. I don't know what they use it today, but most likely same. You say, what do I have to do to join the league? You say, nothing. But we all make the right decisions. And if ever there's a problem, we'll cover you. You ask, is there anything wrong in this contract? There's nothing wrong in the contract. They joined. In the bayan, I said a time will come where these Freemasons will call you in the office and they will ask you to do something which your iman will not allow. And when you say, I can't do this, 
Then they will say, my friend, we brought you up, we will bring you down. At that time, for a man to go home and say to his children, that your father can't earn like yesterday, because they want me to lose my iman. Very few will ever do it. So I mentioned that. And after the bayan, one person came to me. He said, I'm the muazzin of a masjid. I want to talk to you. He said, you know what you said in that? He said, that's me. He said, they took me very high. I was one of the most influential. And when they asked me to do what I could not do, he said, they dropped me to the level that finally to get my sustenance, I asked, can I be the muazzin of the masjid? He said, this was not me once upon a time. So I mentioned it there. I never knew so fast it will come to South Africa. Inshallah, none of y'all have as yet been approached by Freemasons. But I have met friends of mine in university who were asked, join Freemasonry. We will make your every dream come true. The paper was given. My friend said, from the seven of us, I cannot tell you who signed yes, but I can tell you I signed no. He said, but I don't think everyone said no. I don't think. Certain emails sometimes come to me where a child says that I heard of free masonry from your bayan and I think my father is a Freemason. Because I see certain signs. They were given that wealth. And they were told, now you put the wealth in front and say, become my partner. وَشَارِكْهُمْ فِي الْمُوَالِ Tell them, join me. Partnership. If our purpose in life is to drive the smartest car and to have the highest mansion and to have a building that got no fear and to be so well protected that the next time South Africa thinks of looting, I know I'm okay. If my purpose in life is to be well secured, there's a very big chance that forget the insurance agent coming next to us. It will be a Freemason agent. And he will say, we insure even better than every insurance. At that time, if you want to be like your neighbor, if you want to be like your neighbor, then you might have to put your hand out and say, let's shake hands on it. وَشَارِكْهُمْ Become a partner in the wealth. وَعِدْهُمْ And continue giving promises. I will do this for you. I will do that. And then is the end of this verse. Imagine what power. When a person comes to that part of the verse, the normal question would have been the voice. My child from day one has to listen to the voice of the devil. The devil's voice is on his cartoons, is on his phone, is on the series he's following, those movies. It's in Disneyland, it's in Hollywood, it's in Bollywood. That child is glued to that series. His whole mind is becoming that series. Then he's going into school, he's being taught their education. Then he's coming home, he's going for tuition, their education. Then he sits at night to go through his phone. You will tell him, what you're watching? He said, Daddy, only news, don't worry. You also won't tell him much because when your wife says, what you're watching? Only news also. Everyone says, only news. So much of news, but everyone knows when you're reading news, there's a lot of other things with the news also. In the past they would call it the back page. Now it's on the front page. There's no back page. Everything. Ask every person which is the button which you press most on your phone. You say delete. So why? Why is that delete so like famous? Just after you use it, you yourself feel, hey, I don't think she should see this. Delete it. You ask why. You say, she'll feel bad if I was looking at it. She'll feel bad. You yourself know I'm not supposed to. So if you ask your son, what you up to? He said, daddy, news, you also shake your head because you knew he's not reading news, you're not reading news. But even that news is the devil. Forget everything around the news. So you would have thought so much of the voice and then money, who doesn't like money? Money makes the world go green. Money makes the world go green. Very off the topic, I'll just give you one example, one 
I mentioned it the other day, some people took inspiration. Today we're going through a lot of problems in marriages. And nearly every time when the problem comes, when they have to blame someone, they'll always blame not the boy, not the girl, but it's either his parents or her parents. It's always. So the poor in-laws, even if they're best in-laws, they're in-laws in the end. They always will get shocked. Like, it's your fault. If jadu has to take place, you don't have to ask anymore who made the jadu. You already tell them, either my mother and say yes, mother-in-law. So one thing I'm asking people is, if you want to save your marriages, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, should I not show you a way to get love created? So they asked how? He said, tahadu. Continue giving gifts. Tahadu. Up and down. Continue giving gifts. Tahabu. You will love each other. So now I'll have to explain it to you in our context. Because we make major mistakes. When our children or when we getting married, then there's something called kuncha. That I'm sure you all all know. I don't know where that word came also from because it's only understood when marriage takes place. Even the pious Apa, she read it in Mishkat. Where you saw Kunsha, but she knows Kunsha. Everyone knows Kunsha. Whatever they put in that Kunsha, we say to them, remember that Hadiyah that got Nazar. There's going to be no Baraka in that at all. So that one you must just call it for show. Like. For show normally it comes in the family problem start. Then immediately after a few months the girl will phone that one army will say, I think there's jadu in my family. He say, yeah, yeah. You know all those presents you got when you were married? All those kunchas, he said, bring them to me. So all of them got jadu. Poor girl takes everything. One girl took her stove also. Even the stove went there. Ask after that, like, did he ever send it back? Yeah, he's going to send it back. With the guarantee, it must have went up. <laughs> Everything went. So that hadiyah has never brought love. Which hadiyah is supposed to happen? After you get married, it is called small hadiyah. You don't ever give big hadiyah. You don't ever give big hadiyah because you get one jazakallah and never want to see you again. You give small hadiah. Lord people think small hadiahs is a disgrace. Small hadiah is not a disgrace because that farakos, that man who comes behind your car, and he says, sir, sir, reverse, 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 you can see the whole world behind you. But he says, come, come, stop, stop, stop. He just wants you to put 50 cents in his hand. That small hadiah is making him run for your car. Small hadiah. So a little bit more than 50 cents. If you can be that father-in-law, that every time your son comes to visit you, then you know petrol is very expensive. So don't feed him 500 rand worth of food. After the meal, put 500 rand in his hands. That boy will go home. I can guarantee you your daughter-in-law next week will say, we're going to visit your father. <laughs> Say, what about your father? My mother I always see. <laughs> because her mother don't give 500. Money makes the world see green. You can be rich, you can be poor. You put money in someone's hand, he hates you. But one man went to the shop. That man who's what is called the waiter. He never give him a good, this man is like a rich man, he likes to be shown. But that man gave him no shan, no honor. So as he was leaving, he took a 50 rand and he put it in that man's hand. That man looked at 50 rand. Big eyes like, he's thinking I was so bad to this guy. The next time this man came, he was there. He said, sir, 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 this is your place. He looked after him beginning to end. As he was going, gave him five rands. Again his eye went. He said, this one is for last time. And the last one was for this time. Meaning that 50 rand was for today. But what? 150 rand changed the man's whole mind. If you can put small money in your family's hands, your sister doesn't have to be jealous after that. Your mother-in-law, father-in-law, daughter-in-law, son-in-law don't have to be jealous. There's no need for them to make jadu. They'll be making dua. 
Because they know as long as you're getting more money, they're also getting more money. You even say to them, at the moment I'm giving you 500, make dua, Allah gives me more rosy, I'll increase it 600. You will not have to make dua at Hajj time, they'll make the dua. They'll make the dua. One person took me to one business office, he said, see I'm opening this thing, I'm opening this thing. So he was so happy as I walked in because I was close to him. I said, you know, just because we're friends, I came. Otherwise, I would have told you a while before that it pleases you walking in your business, but it doesn't please me. I said, if you had to tell me, Morana, I'm giving you 10% of the shares of this business. The Hajju time, I'll tell you, let's go to your business. Because we need to make dua. I said, I'm not going to make any dua. I said, Allah, give barka, barka. I'm getting nothing out of it. You're wasting my time. Put money in the hands of your family and your own sisters will make dua for you. You will not need Morana and Sheikh's dua. That woman who's worried because her husband passed away. Now one friend, he came and he said, there's this one widow. So immediately I understood from his face what the whole story was. One widow. What he meant is poor widow. I said, is she the only widow? So he kept quiet. He said, I don't know. So, don't know means I never checked, I've only found that one widow. So I said, so, he said that, you know, I think I need to look after. I said, how? He said, ah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I said, the way to do it is you go to checkers and you buy three parcels. And you tell your wife, knock at the door and give three parcels. She'll bring your wife in the house, give her a cup of coffee. I said, why you want the coffee? He said, but how is going to look after I said, you take an alarm system and you install it for her. You pay the money. Why only? I told him, only one widow in the whole town. One widow. You look after widows, but with a clean heart. And you will not have to make dua for your protection. That woman will be making dua for you. You want your safety of your progeny. You don't need that insurance. You need someone's dua. And dua is not asked, Sheikh, make dua for me. Dua comes out from hearts. Find a person who's suffering and put a little money in his hand. A little money. And sometimes the rich people, they feel a little disgraced. That you know, if I give someone hundred rand, like it's below my dignity, it's below his dignity. Hundred rand is not below anyone's dignity. That man who you give a hundred rand to, he really appreciates that hundred rand. Don't, Nabi Sallallahu words were so unique, miracle words. He said, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا. Don't ever think anything to be small. He said, your own smile is very big. Then he said to the woman, even if it is what we call the trotter, like the leg of the animal, we call it paya. Paya is tasty, but it's not real food. He said, even if it's just that paya which got no value. So he said, how can I send it to my neighbor? He said, don't ever think anything is small, it's big. Learn to put your hand in that pocket and take out green. And you will create love. Hadiah give. Second thing, which hadiah? Don't give funny presents you're buying from Woolworths. Because we got enough of it already. We were by Hazrat Shah Hakim Muhammad Akhtar Sahib. Someone brought a lungi. Lungi is the lower garment. Lungi. Three of, quarter of us can't even wear it. It falls off. So we don't wear it. But he brought a lungi. Hazrat Hakim Sahib said, Jazakallah, Jazakallah. Hazrat for you. He went away. Then Hazrat Hakim Sahib told his khadim, open my cupboard there. In front of us. They opened the cupboard. The whole top was lungis. Whole top. So as Rakim Sahib was very jokey, he said these people think mall Sahib's only sleep. Because normally you wear lungi when you sleep. He said, I can open a lungi factory. So he said, who wants lungis? Then they started dishing out lungis. The whole khanka, everyone is getting lungis. One way. Then as Rakim Sahib said, I'll teach you all a lesson. He said, which the intelligent people of the world can't understand. If you want to give someone a hadiyah, give them cash. So what they need, they will buy. Because you think, I think, he likes this. That poor person you gave a hadiyah, 
You gave him such a big hadiya, it can't fit in his house. Hazrat Mawlana Ashraf Ali Tani Rahimullah said, the king, using his king brains, someone did something for him, so he gave him an elephant. He never thought now, how is that man going to look after the elephant? So that man, after two days, he put one bucket around the elephant's head. On bucket. He himself was a beggar with his bucket. And now you had the king's elephant with a bucket. It happened that he put the elephant in a point where the king was walking past. And the king saw it, he said, you disgraced my royal elephant. He said, sire, my whole life I'm living with my bucket. I told the elephant how I love you have to love also. I got no money for myself, I'm look after you. Sometimes that man say, I'll give a hadiya. Say, what hadiya? I said, that's Ferrari. The Morana will say, my friend, I haven't got the petrol money for this car. I can't afford the maintenance for this car. Can you please give me one bicycle? If you use your mind, don't ever think that everyone earns like you. So when you give a hadiya, put 300 rand in your sister's hands and you will see a smile will come. You tell her, I'm going for Umrah, make dua. You think she's going to make dua? You say, I'm going for Umrah and I'm thinking of taking you, make dua. Finished. You think she won't make dua? Open your hearts and you will pull the duas of the world. With the world's duas, the devil's pull will be broken and your aeroplane will remain up. You want to save your children, get the duas of your family. You want to save your wife, get the duas of your family. You want to save yourself from major illnesses, get the duas of your family. Put money in the hands of your own family. Allah has given us lot. And we all said it, charity starts at home, but no one is giving at home. When it comes to the home issue, everyone becomes tight. Everyone says, why is eyes are always on my money? He has to be on your money because he's seeing your money. All you have to do is put some money in his hand and he won't ever put eyes on you after that. So that's where we went off. May Allah make it that what I said in this last few sentences settles down. We got a lot, but we have become very tight in where we're supposed to spend and very generous of outside that. But as long as we don't give directly to our close circles, even that outside one is not going to give its results. Allah Tabarukala then mentions after speaking of the power of the devil. And the question would have been, or the statement would have been, I don't think anyone will be safe from the devil. Then Allah Tabarukala said, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. That, O oh, shaitan, my servants, you can try what you want to, you will not win over them. May Allah make me and you of those servants. Afghanistan showed the world what it was to be that servant. They showed the world. He said, my servants, you do what you want. You want to buy them over. You want to break them. You want to destroy them. You want to put them in Guantanamo Bay. You want to put them in the worst prisons of the world. Some of those Taliban leaders today have taken people on excursion to say, I was here. They put me under the ground. I only heard music, music, music. He said, the hardest thing in my life is I saw them taking that Quran and they put it right there by the dustbin. And every time I would come, they would be torturing the man. But he wasn't worried of the torture. He just said, but don't do that to my Quran. But they were too happy to do it. They knew they're breaking him when they would do what they would do. They would do what they would do who? That very American world which created Hollywood. That very American world which created that hairstyle. That very American world who said to me and you, why don't you dress like us, walk like us, talk like us. That very one who had the chance took the Quran and pushed it in the dustbin. That very one in front of a Muslim urinated on top of the Quran. What made them do what they did? But still that Muslim in the jail Allah Tabarakullah said, try what you want, you will not break them. And then the example was given, why? رَبُّكُمُ الَّذِي يُزْجِي لَكُمُ الْفُلْكَ فِي الْبَحْرِ Allah Tabarakullah says, have you ever seen how the ship goes through the waters? That captain at the beginning would have also thought, I don't think I'll make this journey. 
There's so many things happening in the mighty oceans. For one ship to go and reach, but how many ships reach? Allah Tabarakullah says, it's your Allah that makes the ship reach. Which meant that I can also be pulled if I ask Allah, will you steer me? And you can also. And my family and your family. There is a ship of Islam which is going. And Allah Tabarakullah is going to make sure the ship is going to go through all the darkest of waters. The only thing is, do you want to be making tawaf of the Kaaba? Or do you want to be dancing on the stage? Do you want to jump out of the ship? Or you want to be remaining in the ship? My outside must now ask me that question. That when I look at myself in the mirror, do I want to remain the slave of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Or have I sold myself into the slavery of the devil? Have I? May Allah tawarukala make me and make all of you the slave of Allah. Make us the slave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us cling to this boat of Islam which is never going to capsize. But there are many people who try to catch that aeroplane. There are many people who are jumping off this boat. Jumping. And whenever they jump, some try to catch that aeroplane. What they thought was their salvation, I don't know how they thought it. He grabbed onto the wheel. And then the wheels closed. When that aeroplane landed, they found them dead. So many of them were dead. Maybe they never knew what it means, aeroplane wheels closing. What they grabbed onto to save their life, destroyed them. Me and you must not grab onto something that breaks us. This is a ship that is going to reach that destination. But if ever I think I want out of the ship, then Almighty Allah is so independent that Almighty Allah has never begged anyone, please stay on. Almighty Allah said the doors are open. If you want to go, jump. But no one who fell in the water ever survived. Allah Tabarakullah save me. Allah Tabarakullah save you. Allah Tabarakullah save our entire progeny. Allah promised that my certain servants, the devil, will have no hold over them. Allah make us amongst those.